All right, lads. It's officially released. 1.12.7. The new feature patch for Hearts of Iron 4. Confirming loads of bug fixes as usual. Making the game super refined, super polished. As well as going over some old focus trees and making some minor and some pretty major tweaks one thing i noticed is this patch is 1.12.7 and you think to yourself why are they not calling it 1.13 well that my presumption would be is that probably the feature patches are probably that final number there so 1.12.8 we'll expect that soon and then maybe in a 1.12.9 we'll probably see it soon there with a saving 1.13 for probably a major expansion release are they going to do major expansions they've not announced anything so it's all just up in the air really no, but anyway this is the new patch we've just got and it is operation source 1.12 Point seven. You could play this before, like a week ago. It was part of a beta patch that you could have in Steam. But if you updated your Steam up to the latest version right now, this is the latest version that should update for your Hearts of Iron 4 experience. All right, so here's the patch list. So what we're going to do is hop into the game back and forth and check out some of the spicy new updates. And I kid you not, some of these updates are really big, and I think you're going to be super happy with them. Something that the community has been asking for for, for a long time long long time so everyone knows together for victory is probably well it is the oldest expansion for hearts of iron 4 and for the most part it just feels so unbelievably out of date compared to the rest of the game anyway the first thing we're going to look at is italian decisions expand the regional control in ethiopian states no longer requires any ethiopian legitimacy value let's hop into italy and have a look but i, I like that we brought this one up talking about legitimacy of ethiopia i think it comes under the path where you've annexed ethiopia and uh, you need to try and keep down the legitimacy of the exiled government of ethiopia the legitimate system is a bit weird i think it needs a little bit of work because when you play as ethiopia and you go down the path of being exiled which is boarding the train you've got lots of options to, to increase your legitimacy and cause uprising inside of ethiopia but if you're playing on historical you never really get an opportunity to actually create an uprising that's actually meaningful there's only really enough time to create create an up uprising in one potential state which isn't really enough to actually cause any actual damage and it's some common of that when you're trying to build up your legitimacy as ethiopia you can never gain enough because italy's pushing you down at a faster rate so before you even have enough power to create an uprising there's too much compliance within those states to actually cause the uprising so it's, it is kind of pointless it's kind of shame too because this part of the focus tree is actually kind of interesting but man you just don't have the ability to use its full potential on historical i'll admit if you play with historical turned off and the AI is selecting random focuses, you might get incredibly lucky and never he'll never go for any of the focuses that reduce your legitimacy. So you never get the option to do that. I just thought that was a passing thought that might be quite useful. Canada's focus, dollar a year, man, now grants additional spirit of minus 33% political advisor cost. This is really interesting because this is one of the focuses on Together for Victory that was just forgotten a long, long time ago. And some of these focuses now actually feel meaningful that you should actually go for them. Back in the old days of Together for Victory, all these focus on the left-hand side, for the most part, weren't very good. So they've just gone straight across all of them and buffed them. So examples, this one, dollar a year, man, which is kind of like a really interesting lore of Canada, which you don't really go get to dig too deep into unless you read the uh, the flavor text that comes with it. Canadian industry has efficiency issues, but a number of the wealthy businessmen have offered their service and advice in return for a token sum. The small hatchery of counselors will move us forward it's kind of interesting but it's not groundbreaking i thought this was like a reduction of all advisors as well as high command by 33 percent but it's only these three here is it something worth rushing for uh, i guess it's a nice improvement though because in the past all it did was give you a research bonus of 100 percent and it's so strange that to come down like a focus tree path like this and reach the destination at the very bottom of it just to get a really crap bonus you know i feel like the bottom of the focus tree should be the juicy bonuses you know See, that's pretty worth it. Removing Great Depression and gaining you a bunch of military factories. It feels worth. But coming to the bottom just to get something really pathetic is really bad. Someone said that there's a really lot of good advisors. So popular figure is good for stability. Silent work cost is good. Another stability advisor is pretty decent. This one's pretty good too. Quartermass general. No one goes for this, but it gives 15% bonus for constructing of reactors. For the most part, yeah, you're right, actually. For the most part... Canada actually has some good advisors. So potentially you could save yourself 150 political power for three advisors, couldn't you? By going for this one early. Just suppose it's something to work for, I guess. I did try and bug this, but when you're doing your civil war, I think it might be swastika clubs or burning the royal portraits. When you do your civil war as Canada, it really bugs out because the whole world declares war on you, which I don't think that's what's meant to happen. Because I think when you're in civil war as Canada, I think the other major powers are not meant to intervene, but they do. So that's an old bug that's resurfaced. And this one's changed too. Bits and pieces program gives you a bunch of production bonuses of 4%. 4% is just a strange number, but hey, 
I guess we could round up to 5%, I guess. In the past, it just gives you production efficiency growth and the base increase, uh, but it also gives a bit of an output, which I suppose is pretty cool. A lot of these only used to give one factories too, but they give a bunch more too. That one's really bad too. Infrastructure and building a railway. Ooh. This one's been buffed too, adding two extra civilian factories. I think I only gave one before. A bunch of these two have been buffed as well. Once again, some of these bottom ones, we have to work all the way down the focus tree just to get a, like a really rubbish token number of oil. I know for balancing reasons why they would do that, but it just feels like the reward at some of these focuses needs need to be feel more meaningful. Once again, really thankful they've added these. It really makes the Canadian focus tree a little bit more spicier. But my goodness, some of the, the end focuses are just a little bit... Ugh. So look at some of the others. So bits and pieces program, I just mentioned that. Canadian focuses the Grand Army experience that grants significantly more of it, which is useful early game because you don't have a lot of ways of gaining XP as an allied nation as Canada. Fascist Canada now has the choice to offer concessions to the United Kingdom in the return for Labrador and Newfoundland. This is really good because this was a focus that just would never work on historical. So now we've got concessions for Labrador and Newfoundland. So the backstory here is when you go fascist, you have the ability to ask for these states back. Two issues. One, these states are practically meaningless. I don't even think they've got any factories in them or resources. So from a, from a, like a, a balancing perspective, it kind of feels like what you're gaining from... Oh, one of them has a civilian factory. Okay, I was wrong. I feel like, once again, if you go to the bottom of the focus tree, there should be meaningful bonuses that you should get that actually feel like they're worth your time. But just to get these two pieces of land that only gains you one civilian factory... I don't know. It just feels underwhelming to me. At the end of the day, you're going to go to the war against the UK anyway as a fascist Canada. So why not just take it by force anyway, other than having to wait 70 days for a focus that might not even give you the land anyway? Once again, I'm coming from a, a satisfaction perspective, a fun perspective, where I can understand from a historical perspective, it probably would be a realistic thing for the UK just to give up easily. You get my drift. You can develop them later. I mean, yeah, you can do that with any land. I mean, one thing I'll say about Canada is not they're not sharp short of uh, places to build if it was a nation that was like maybe south africa and you run out of building slots early on yeah sure i'd understand that but you're canada you know you've got so much land so in that case you have lots of places to expand to so getting two extra states is not really a massive improvement so what this left one does is it gives resources to the uk but gives you a very likely chance that they will secede labrador newfoundland to you but this one on the right you demand it from them and depend on a little bunch of attributes, I think the size of your army or relations between you and the UK, it makes it more or less likely that they will give you the land. So one, it take it basically, it's mine. And this one is basically give it conditionally. It's cool this flavor's in here, but come on, just give us a better bonus than one civilian factory for two states. It just doesn't feel worth my time. You catch my drift. Ships transferred as part of the peace conference action no longer have crew included. Oh, this was kind of strange in a way. So you'd level up, like say, a carrier to veteran. And let's say you take it in a peace conference and it would still be veteran, which doesn't kind of make sense in a way, does it? Because the crew would not come as slaves as part of the ship, would they? As a peace conference, doesn't make sense. Okay, Australia. Australia has an additional shipyard focus. Each shipyard focus gives one of the naval designers. Naval designer traits have been rebalanced. I just want to talk about a ship designer that Bradley at PDX told me about. Am I causing him trouble by mentioning his name? I usually just say PDX or PDX staff, don't I? Oh, well, I've said it now. Too late. About this designer. So that he mentioned about this was so OP it needed to be nerfed. This 25% reduction of all ship. And all it did in the past was reduce the max range. But it looks like they've also reduced the armor and heavy attack of capital ships. But for the most part, range is not an issue as one of the major nations as the allies because you've got so much access to so many ports, your range is not limited anyway. If you have access to a port, your range will be the circular part of this path and like here too. And for instance, if Portugal joins the one you've got here and then maybe if you invade Spain, you've got here and then you've got the one more islands for um, Portugal here. So you never really have any issues with range. So range is not really an issue. Range is an issue for, for instance, the axis though. But for the most part, you get 25% reduced ships. Maybe that has been nerfed. I don't even know. I got it right this time. So light ship specialist gains plus 30% max range for heavy cruisers, sub detection and max speeds and screens as well. That's actually really good. And the Pacific Venture makes convoys cost less. Interesting. More range for all ships and less production cost for submarines. I'll be real, guys. These are actually decent designers and I would feel like I'd actually do these as a part of Australia too. One of the biggest issues you've got with Australia is because you need to have enough range to interfere with Japan's shipping. And one of the biggest issues is you just don't have the range to get into the upper part of the uh, Pacific or the central parts. But the Pacific Venture feels really good. I like the fact that you can go for one from more of a combat orientated light ship specialist too. 
Oh, it's 30% or 25%. So they both give lots of range anyway. That's really cool. And to get access to those, you've got to go for these focuses. And both of these focuses now give additional naval dot yards. That's really cool. All Australian focuses grant you five to 10 times more XP. Five to 10 times? So in the past, this would have gave you five XP. They've upped it to 25. But these are actually meaningful increases now. One of the biggest issues some of the commonwealth nations of the british empire is you kind of sit on your hands for a very long period just picking focuses because you don't have a lot of xp you don't have a lot of equipment you don't have a lot of factories so you're sitting on your hands waiting for the war to happen so you can actually do something and it's kind of boring it's not a good gameplay experience so i 100 percent support this change this is such a good change because now you can actually do more at the end of the day that's what you really want to do i don't know man i think sometimes in the old expansions for hoi 4 they got a little bit too lost in the history and i feel like they needed to focus a little bit more on fun and i feel like if they return back to the fun i think i'm going to be all for that it, it, it just seemed like these content packs seem to be focusing more on the forbidden thing to do in a map game fun okay the australian arms production now grants you 10 percent cheaper infantry equipment cost in addition to a civilian conversion so i think in the past all it did was civilian conversion speed but now it gives cheaper guns as well it seems like the the allies seem to get quite a lot of bonuses to make guns cheaper it's a kind of way of balancing things out because the axis will have more factories won't they where the allies have an opportunity to catch up by going for focuses that make guns cheaper that's kind of how they've kind of balanced it isn't it this is interesting rats of tobruk is this a new image in the elite unit in sydney our brave soldiers have proven themselves adept at desert warfare and scavenging from the battlefield they harass the enemy striking their bases and retreating before the counterattack. Would this be kind of cool if you gained the scavenger trait or something like that? Is this a new focus? No, that's an old focus. Okay, same thing. Okay. I feel like national focuses are kind of event driven. I feel like you should give bonuses that are kind of relevant to what they're doing. Because it wasn't the, the rats of Tobruk, the ability for the allies to hold Tobruk while it was encircled. So wouldn't it be better to give them something like a 20% defense bonus in mountains or something that's a part of these australian history i think one of the issues with the focus trees sometimes is sometimes they're a little bit generic but aren't very conditional based on circumstances so for instance like these give bonuses to industry the flat amounts they're not historical they're just basically something to do while you're waiting for the war to happen but some of them are based upon like events happening in the war you know like for instance the soviet union's got loads of events and national focus is based around the Germans invading them. And they're all situational based upon that invasion happening. It almost feels like there needs to be two focus trees. One based on situations and one based on just generic focuses. It creates a strange overlap in a way between national focuses and decisions. Like they, they kind of like, they sometimes bounce into each other over and over again. Which is funny because decisions, if you don't remember, decisions didn't actually exist in the original release for Hearts of Iron 4. They were added later on. War contribution for lend leasing fuel and equipment roughly tripled. So it was too high to begin with. Then they nerfed it to practically nothing and now they've increased it again. <laughs> so it should be somewhere in the middle now. The malice from receiving lend lease remains unchanged for now. So for contributing, you gain more contribution. But for receiving the equipment, it doesn't change the overall scores. I'm trying to figure out how in my head how that would work. Reduce the cost for last stand. Uh, I think I'm not for that because I think last stand sucks. <laughs> I think last stand's rubbish. War score for capturing a province for the first time increased from 4 from 3. War score from IC damage reduced by 20%. So there's still tweaking the war contribution system a little bit. They haven't found a sweet spot yet, which is kind of cool in a way because it, it requires a lot of balancing. Some of these major changes to how contribution works obviously are not something you could just enter into a keyboard and be like, boom, that's the actual proper number we're going to go with. A lot of it requires a lot of tweaking and a lot of balancing. Menchuko now has a, a core on Odos. All right, okay. So the idea of Menchuko is it's meant to be Inner Mongolia, isn't it? Is it Outer Mongolia or Inner Mongolia? This is Inner and this is Outer. Anyway, so it's got a core on this state now. I think it had that before. And now it's got a core on this state now. Just supposedly the, I would presume, the Mongol populated areas, I presume. Which is kind of cute, I suppose. Taking occupied states in peace conferences is now considerably cheaper. AI is less likely to contest unoccupied states. They still will if they have good reasons. I think one of the issues in peace conferences is that the AI would quite frequently keep making the same demands for the same province and never give up, which would result in, in instances where they would blow all their points just to try and get one piece of land. I suppose that's to try and fix that. Added one Hungarian focus to construct a new flagship, accelerating potential naval growth a bit. Admiral Horthy can now complete his transdescence. All right, let's look at Hungry Boys. This is a brand new focus, brand new content. Here we go. 
God, it's, it's just, it's disguised inside of all the naval focuses. It's actually hard to see. So we've got Pride of the Fleet. Creates a variant of a battleship, I presume. And adds the production line of a battleship. It says it twice, though. Create the variant, create a variant. Let's test it out. Okay, focus, no checks. And we'll annex Yugoslavia as well. So this is the one they've added here. It's about 60, 70% complete. So fully kitted out pretty up-to-date ship to be fair we call this like a 1930s style battleship i presume in 1936 hull can't really complain about this ship i suppose that you're practically getting for free can't complain about that can you i mean i kind of like these focuses that they exist because for the most part if you're a nation that isn't a naval based nation the only way you're ever going to compete with the rest of the world is with these style focuses i suppose the real meta of developing a big navy now is to invade all the small nations that with decent sized navies such as yugoslavia bulgaria romania greece turkey uh and then just in the peace conference taking their navy that's the proper meta way of developing a navy i'm not complaining that it exists but it just feels a little bit underwhelming to say that you get one ship for this ah, eh. it's one of those i kind of like that it exists but man i feel like it could be a bit stronger the whole the achievement is now easy now ah, it was never a difficult achievement to begin with okay this is a biggie this is a biggie sit down boys so from testing from my little youtuber battle royale if you haven't checked out that video you might want to check it out here Ooh, that video right there can you see that that video give it a give it a click you might enjoy it it talks about uh youtubers presenting a design for an aircraft and then battling it out to find the most icy effective aircraft possible. And one thing we discovered is the engine two outperforms the engine three on cost effectiveness. The engine three might be slightly more expensive and give a speed boost, but that speed boost wasn't worth the extra production costs. And someone, someone told them a paradox about this issue. So they've nerfed engine two. That's basically it. Yeah. Engine two has been nerfed buffing engine three so it would hopefully make engine three more viable and therefore more cost effective has anyone done any testing on this uh no but maybe maybe it'll result in a better performance maybe it won't who knows uh hungarian aluminium production is balanced between transdubia and northern hungary added to excavation decisions improves the bructite production required excavation too let's have a look oh wow look at that more option for more aluminium amazing How about to take out Transylvania. We have the option to get oil. We, what do we need here? We need more than 14 civilian factories. And this will give us a total of 24 oil. That's a decent amount of oil. One of the issues with excavation sometimes is that you put a big investment of civilian factories into them. And then the payoff is, is kind of small. So it's nice to see that they actually give a decent amount. If I potentially max out the infrastructure. And then let's say go for forced labor. There we go. More resources. And then the maximum resources you gain from it is 43, which is pretty damn sweet. That's with maxed out excavation, max infrastructure, which is, could be fair, actually really competitive with Romania's base amount of oil as well. Of course, it's not a realistic scenario because I'm on a very difficult conscription law, which is something that Hungary would struggle with anyway. My God, look at the amount of aluminium opportunities now in Hungary. Hungary has the real opportunity to be the hungry boy of aluminium. And if he takes out Romania and Transylvania, also oil it's really interesting to see that as well you know what i have just realized this is a balancing thing when hungary now demands transylvania from romania transylvania romania he has the option to develop this region so it's the axis's imperative to make sure hungary gets northern transylvania to get access to this oil because this oil will be funding the war effort for the germans ah interesting that's actually not only a nice bonus but that's a really cool balancing thing that you wouldn't usually think about add late game resources prospecting decisions for tapping the derna oil fields in northern transylvania yes added hungarian focus for restarting the shipping industry adding three dot yards to the coastal state that's kind of cool at least i've added more now once again if you're a nation that is landlocked and you have the potential to gain a navy at some point i feel like you should be rewarded with a large amount of dock yards because at the end of the day ships take a really long time to build so it would make more sense that you gain a lot of them to let you catch up to the rest of the world once again not historical i get that part but once again focusing more on fun come on fun fun more fun canadian focus retool the angus shops now grants two million two so three united shipyards gives more factories yeah yeah some of these focuses were really bad anyway 70 days for one civilian factory was just so poo uh defense of regulations kind of regular is 35 days instead of 70 that's good because it's one of these focuses you have to go for early when world tension spikes added approximately more german names wow added 20 percent more english names wow added a new option when releasing nations you can now choose to retain states which you have cause retain cause can also be uh returned to the puppet through an occupation menu okay guys this is the biggie 
This is the biggie. We've been built up to this moment, but this is the one that the community has been asking for for bloody ages. Let's give a hypothetical now. So we are going to invade the Hasburg Prince, demand a referendum, restore the Austro-Hungarian Empire. There we go. The referendum was successful. The Austro-Hungarian Empire. Woo! Yay, yay! So you're probably thinking right now, okay, so we've got all the cores on these territory, right? Is, can we get an option to get cores? Oh, yeah. Reintegrate the Empire. There we go. So a bunch of these, we're going to gain cores on them, but not all, every, everyone. So let's just go with a, a weird hypothetical that we... I don't know. We get Bulgaria and then we get Greece as well. I don't know. We've gone some pretty mad war mongering. Yeah, so we go into occupied territories and now we can hop into, let's say, release Bulgaria. We're going to make him a puppet state and also retain cores. So if there's any land that we have cores on inside of Bulgaria, we will still keep these. So they'll be released and not take up any of our core land. And it has not really affected us in that case. Probably the best example is going to be Yugoslavia and Romania. So Yugoslavia, retain cores. Boom. Oh, that's so good. That's so good. Then we'll do Romania too. Ah, oh, look at that Romania. That's so good. Okay, we're, we're about to break the game now, guys. What if we release something that we... They have no cause whatsoever. Oh, God, boys. Are we going to try and break the game? Krakow has cause. I don't think it has. No, it doesn't. I think maybe... You, you, do you get cause later on, maybe? But I don't think this takes into account claims. I think it only takes into account cause. So let's just do this focus and just see if it does. I'm really curious to see this. So we'll annex Poland. I have a feeling this is not going to be the case. But we'll, we'll take it out anyway, and just as an experiment. So now we have a claim on Poland. We'll do... We'll do... Uh, we'll do Italy, Italy as well. So we release Italy, but keep the cause. That's so good. That's so good. Okay, that was a bad example because there was actually a core state there. I didn't realize they'd separated these two states. I didn't realize that was even a thing. I'm learning things about the game, guys. And anyway, let's release Poland now. So we're going to release Poland, but we have a claim on Krakow to get all the land back. Okay. So right now, everything that we own, we have a claim on. So now we'd be releasing stuff inside of our own territory, wouldn't we? Yeah, there's no way around that. Let's just see what would happen, though. So we'll, we'll say we're going to release Croatia, but only release stuff that has cores, but it's all cored and nothing happens. Oh, my God. Paradox has actually thought about it. Release her because Zavina does nothing. Oh, they've thought about it. They thought about it. Release Austria. It does nothing. Ah. <laughs> Damn. So, it doesn't work with claims. It only works with cores, which kind of makes sense, I guess. There you go, guys. We have uh, Austria-Hungary borders. And, of course, we've got lots of few AI tweaks, bug fixes, and a few modding tweaks as well. Decrease the likelihood that Switzerland will join the Allies or the Axis late game. Feels like they join the Allies like every single game late game now. And there we go, boys. So, any changes you would like to see in the upcoming content patches? Or Hearts of Iron 4. We're expecting at least maybe two, maybe three. Who knows? I'm taking a complete shot in the dark. I actually don't know how many they're going to be. But if you guys want to comment below a change that you'd like to see, let me know. And uh, we'll go from there. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Ooh. This is the next video. Click it.